I mean, it's raining outside, and it rained a lot this morning, right? But, but it is still a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. Amen? Amen. Yes. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Dave Parker, and King of Kings is our family of faith, and we are just tickled pink that you are with us today. As is our practice lately, we will be celebrating Holy Communion during our live streams now. So if you still need to, you know, get some bread, get some wine or grape juice ready. So after our prayers of intercession, we jump into our words of institution and share the body and blood of Jesus Christ. As we experience Holy Communion this morning, even though we are not in the room together physically, may you experience Jesus still bringing us together and building us up through his body and blood. A couple quick announcements this morning. Uh, one of our online opportunities called Monday Motivation. Now, if you haven't checked it out yet, it, it's meant to help you get a, a head start or a good start to your week. 
uh, with your body, mind, and spirit. Uh, we'll now be hosting uh, Monday Motivation every first and third Monday of the month at 3.30. We'll be recording them. So if you can't tune in and join us in that conversation, you can still pick up on it whenever you're available. Uh, people of all ages are invited to participate in this year's virtual Bible school. Yes, we are still having Bible school. We're just pushing it online and inviting even our adults to join with us. Uh, we're calling it Journey Together. So on August 17th through the 21st, we will be posting videos every day that include skits, crafts, games, songs, and lessons from the Bible. Uh, children or adults, everyone can join, who register online can pick up a tote bag full of craft supplies that will help you participate fully in all the activities. We'll have those available. You just stop by on whatever days we're going to be around and, and just bring those home with you. In addition to the daily video, you're going to be invited to come back uh, to the nightly virtual campfire where we'll sing songs, share comments, and end each day praising our God. Uh, you can register online starting today. Uh, by going to our website, koklc.org, and clicking on the VBS tab. And we can't wait to see you and have you participate with us in that fun opportunity. Finally, we are planning a weekly outdoor service to begin on Monday night, August 10th at 7 p.m., which is eight days from now. Wow. Uh, uh, we'll be back out on the uh, back lawn, so park uh, you know, bring, your, bring a lawn chair or a blanket to sit on. Bring your masks, please. Uh, we are going to socially, physically distance as we sit around that lawn. But uh, we look forward to seeing you and coming to join in, uh, again, uh, our worship and praise to our God. Please be sure to go potty before you come because we're going to keep the building closed. Sorry, that's Parker household language. Eh, sorry, we use potty a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's jump right into our worship. Uh, we join our voices in our opening song of praise. We come into this holy place to bring the sacrifice of praise.
Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. Well, sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I have a conspiracy theory that I have been working on for years now, and, and I think it's so much better than if a doctor wearing a white lab coat is legitimate or if mail-in voting will end democracy. Are you ready for this? Hmm? I think Jesus was the first Lutheran. <gasps> yeah, I said it. Yep. I mean, just think about it. I mean, he's big on love and grace. We're big on love and grace. Have you ever noticed that wherever you, uh, you find food in the Bible, Jesus is there? I mean, just like us, we love food. I mean, <laughs> we practically put potlucks on the map. I mean, as often as Jesus was praying, he was sharing food. His greatest lessons and miracles involved food. Late in his ministry, he even names himself as food in bread and wine. I mean, this man was all about food. We're all about food. He was the first Lutheran. And the best part about us having worship online is that since you're watching this on the internet, it now has to be true. Because <laughs> we all know everything you find on the internet these days is true. I mean, right? Can I get a shout out from all my Facebookers? Yeah. Yeah. Our Bible reading for the day tells us about an amazing story that involves food and lots of it. There's so much food, there are baskets of food left over. So let's jump in. Last week we finished Matthew chapter 13. Today we're jumping into Matthew chapter 14, starting in the 13th verse. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go back into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. There's our gospel reading for today. Thanks be to God. Pretty amazing story here. One, world, one filled with so much to learn from. We know this story as the feeding of the 5,000, which I always thought was the wrong title for this reading, since it even mentions in the story that, they were with, that there was way more than 5,000 because they didn't even count the women and children. I mean, I can only assume that the person in charge of counting either got tired or just kind of went, you know, hey, you mean I got to count all the people without the beards too? Forget about it. <laughs> we're just going to call it 5,000 plus. <laughs> And all 5,000 plus came from their homes, from their villages, to see, to touch, to hear someone they believed had power and abilities to literally change their lives. I mean, even the sick came out on this trek. And they all got way more than I imagined they were hoping for. And as I wrestled with our reading this week, so many questions came to mind, some of which had been around for a very long time. <laughs> questions like, well, did it really happen this way? 
Where did all this food come from? I mean, how does one end up with, with more than what one started with? And what did they do with those 12 baskets of leftovers? Then, of course, there are those different conspiracy theories about this story, too. I mean, could this actually be a, a miracle where Jesus pulls bread and fish out of thin air? Or did people just catch on to what Jesus was doing and decide to share what they had brought with them? So by the time they were all said and done, everything combined with what they had brought was 12 baskets full of leftovers. Questions or theories like these are so often what people try to focus on in this story. But in a story filled with food and miracles, something else spoke to me this week. So let's chew on this and, uh, and take another look at the story from Matthew. First off, let's jump back to the beginning here. Anyone notice how our reading began? Verse 13 starts with, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. Which begs the question, what did Jesus hear that was driving him to want to be by himself? To get away from something? Well, Turns out the first 13 verses tell us quite a bit. And it turns out it wasn't good news. In fact, it was awful. In the, first, in the verses just before our reading, Jesus was told that his cousin John, the man who had baptized him, the man who had been sent ahead of him to prepare God's people before Jesus came, he had just been killed by Herod. So as you can imagine, Jesus was dealing with a lot of emotions, pain, Sorrow, anger, perhaps even fear. And he needed to get away from it all, so he was headed to a deserted place. And according to our reading, when the crowds caught wind that he was nearby, that he was taking off on his own, they couldn't pass up the chance. So they followed him on foot from all the towns. And well, sure enough, they, they found him. Before he could even put a foot on the shore, and even though he was totally set on finding some quiet place to be alone, he has compassion for them, heals them, feeds them, provides for them before he can once again get back to what he wanted to do in the first place. And that totally screamed off the pages at me as I read this time and time again this week. I mean, I can totally relate with Jesus today. I mean, can't we all? When it's been a busy day or, or a tiring week or something terrible has happened, what's the first thing we typically want to do? To get away, right? To, to get some time to ourselves, maybe to go to bed early or, or to get some fresh air or to take a vacation or to hide in our basements. Or is that last one just, just me? <laughs> uh, some time apart, right? Just a few minutes alone, even just a break to catch our breath. I mean, how many of us want that when life isn't great? Yeah, I think we all do. So here we have Jesus. It was just after some R&R &R, on a mission for some personal time to recoup and reconnect with God, and he gets ambushed. His plans are stopped immediately. I mean, do me a favor and type in a capital Amen if you have ever had that happen to you. Of course we have, right? I mean, welcome to the pandemic, where we all had plans of how we were going to best spend these past five months. And how does that make us feel when our plans get stopped completely? Well, frustrated, angry, depressed, angry, annoyed, angry. Sad, angry, <laughs> flustered. Did I, did I mention angry? Yeah, <laughs> I'm having a counseling session right now with you. Thank you. I mean, anyone with demanding jobs, family obligations and plans, our own desires of fun and relaxation, we get so involved with what we're doing or what we want to be doing that we certainly don't want to be interrupted or inconvenienced or distracted. So we try to ignore or even blow up at what's nudging for our attention, don't we? I remember a commercial from a few years ago where this little girl, I think she was coming home from school, and uh, she, had a, she had colored and drawn a picture of her family. 
And she was so excited to show her family. And she ran into the front door and she saw her mom first. And she ran up to her and says, Mommy, Mommy, look what I drew today. And the mom was busy multitasking supper and cleaning. So the girl ran to her sister who's got her headphones on and, and doing homework. And in true sibling form, doesn't even turn around to acknowledge her, right? Then she found her brother with picture in hand, only for him to fly right past with a, a baseball glove running out the door. And then into her father's office, where he was on the phone with a client and quickly says hi before swiveling back to his papers. And at the end, the little girl was outside describing the picture to the family dog without anyone to share in her excitement. In each case, people were distracted, busy, uninterruptible. In each instance, the one seeking attention and time was filled with joy and was only looking to share that joy. And in each case, the one seeking attention was ignored, put off, because she wasn't a part of their plan. She was an interruption, an inconvenience, perhaps even an annoyance to their goals. And in each case, it was a missed opportunity for ministry to witness to the loving grace of God. And it makes me wonder, how many times does this happen in our lives, especially lately? We've become a society solely fixated on being productive. I mean, have you ever caught yourself saying, oh, I just I feel like I didn't get enough done today. Did that to-do list get smaller or larger, right? And if you're anything like me, you get an idea in your head what needs to happen to be successful. And those constant interruptions and inconveniences fly in the face of our plans. The really fun ones are when there are interruptions within your interruptions, right? <laughs> like being in a hurry to leave the house when you can't find your keys. Or you lock the front door and turn to walk away when you hear the phone ringing inside the house. Or my personal favorite, being in a hurry to a meeting and then realizing the car's out of gas. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> I mean, talk about frustrating, right? I'm sure every one of you could all share more than a few interruptions that you have experienced lately. But Jesus and how he reacts in this story spoke to my heart this week. You see, for Jesus, his interruption, this inconvenience of all these people showing up when he was just trying to get away for a bit became one of the greatest opportunities for him to show God's love and provision. He could have said, sorry, can't help you. I'm going on vacation. I need some rest. I'm not available. But instead, his willingness to see an interruption as an opportunity literally changed lives. Thousands of them. It's even changed mine today. So now let's make this personal. What if you and I were to start seeing our interruptions and inconveniences as opportunities instead? I mean, talk about a perspective change, right? I mean, what if instead of being frustrated, we get intrigued about where it might lead us? I mean, think about it with me. Every moment in life is yet another chance to, to experience the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to break into our lives, to find something lost, to, to greet a stranger, to learn something new, to make a difference in someone's life, even if and especially when it isn't a part of our plan for the day. I recently heard someone say, life is what happens when plans change. Well, ministry happens in the interruptions. Sometimes it turns out great and sometimes not so much. I'm sure we can experience a bit of both, but today Jesus invites us to be on the lookout for such interruptions because there just might be something important that's about to happen. I typically have about a, a dozen interruptions every time I try to sit down and write a sermon. And usually it's one of my boys, if not 
many of my boys. And I have a choice, don't I? I can be annoyed and frustrated and, and share my feelings with my sons. Or I can see it as an, uh, as an opportunity for love and for life to be shared. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not great at this yet. I'm still a work in progress. Some days I totally get frustrated. But what I've already found is that life is so much better for me when I see these interruptions as an opportunity for a blessing. It's a complete perspective change. And I'm thinking this is a great lesson for all of us today. Because our lives have been interrupted. By COVID, by our politics, by protests and demonstrations, by job loss and financial crisis, even by our fears. And what if, instead of sharing our anger and our annoyance, we take a deep breath, and we see these issues and so many others that have interrupted our lives as opportunities to love and to be loved, to forgive and to be forgiven, and to share compassion. Jesus stopped everything to hear the stories of pain and struggle and sickness. And instead of judging or shaming, he sat with them, healed them, loved them. And that's what truly changed people's lives. And I truly believe that you and I can do that too. Just like the parables from last week about the kingdom of heaven being like a mustard seed and a pinch of yeast, even the tiniest of things can grow into something larger than life. Well, the same goes with anything you can do or say to someone in need. It just might make all the difference in the world, even when they're an interruption or an inconvenience. Yes, this amazing story of the feeding of way more than 5,000 is about food and miracles, but it's also about interruptions and possibilities and about caring enough to take the time. My sisters and brothers, may you hear God inviting you to see all of your interruptions and inconveniences as opportunities to show the love of Christ in this world. May you have the wherewithal in those moments to remember the things that truly matter most. And you never know. Perhaps God will use you to start a miracle of his own. Can I get an amen? Amen. We once again lift our voices in praise up to the Lord with our next song of praise. Stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean.
Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray now for the church, the world, and all who are in need. At the end of each prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you take resources that appear to be meager. You bless them, and there is more than enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is also abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. And protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to the nations and peoples of this earth, inviting everyone to abundant living. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness, that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing, Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of joy and salvation. Give our people such a welcoming and loving heart in all that we say and do and write and post that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and all those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. We now take a moment to reflect on our week and confess those times when we have failed to live as God calls us to live. Please repeat after me. Loving God, we confess. We do not trust your abundance. And we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves. And rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. And now, hear this, dearly beloved. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given over to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by God's authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people say, Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And at this time, I invite you to take the hands of those in your home or, or to extend your hands across the internet as we pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now, as you either hand out or commune yourself with the body of Christ, I invite you to use these words, the body of Christ given for you. And now as you either hand out or commune yourself with the blood of Christ, use these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. People of God, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace, and all of God's people say, Amen. And finally, a special thank you for those of you who uh, take the extra time to share God's blessings with us by either mailing in or, or donating through our website. Uh, we continue sharing our ministries only through your generosity. So again, thank you so much for sharing your blessings so that we too can share with the world. Now invite us to join our voices one more time as we sing our closing praise song. Make
us one We cry Let us love Like you love Let us run Every love Every child Every heart Beautiful Let us run Man, I don't know about you, but I had goosebumps. I, th I still have them. Don't zoom in. That'd be weird. Okay. People of God, do not be afraid. In the midst of all of our needs, we have a Lord and a Savior who provides even more than enough. And for that, we can truly give thanks to our God. Amen? Amen. See you next Sunday morning at 930, if not before then, with one of our online opportunities. Until then, be blessed. Yeah.